All right, welcome to another video lesson. I'm working with spreadsheets again today, and I want to show you how to make uh, a few different types of graphs. You can make a bar chart, pie chart, line graph, and I'll show you how to do it. It's really, really easy. So let's start with the bar chart. So the way I'm going to do bar charts is I'm going to do um, some expenses. So I'm going to do this. Uh, actually, wait, I'm going to move that down one. Expense. And then I'm going to write month. And right here, I'm going to write uh, January. Sorry, wait, let's just take the month over. Let's go like this. Expense January, February, and March. We'll do three months. So maybe for an expense, I might have uh, a cell phone. I might have TV, internet, gas, and maybe rent, something like that. I'm just going to make up some numbers. So let's say your cell phone costs $75 a month. And maybe February was $85 because we had some extra long distance or something. And then back to $75. TV, let's say it's consistently $115. Really don't know. I'm just making up numbers. It doesn't really matter. Internet maybe is $65 a month. Gas, let's say, is $50 a month. And then maybe we'll put $80 this month. And then... 45 this month and then rent let's say rent is 900 a month okay I just want to show a little bit of difference here so actually because I don't have this row up here I'm, I actually am going to move everything up so here's a quick lesson if you ever want to move anything in Google Sheets um, all you have to do is highlight everything and then you have to bring your cursor to the edge and it turns into a hand once it's a hand you can pull it Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, I might just bold this here, or you could use uh, alternating colors to make this look better. Go under Format and then Alternating Colors. Okay, so it looks a little bit better now. Now let's go ahead and make a bar chart. So let's do the expenses of January with bar chart. So as long as you've got everything all together, you can just highlight like this. Make sure you grab the, the column names, so the cell phone and TV, and then grab the month you want. And you go to insert chart and it's probably going to suggest the bar chart already which it did which is really really cool so uh, there's a lot of intelligent uh, stuff happening in Google Sheets so it's already decided uh, column charts gonna be best you can go in here and use different ones if you want so like say you want it to be sideways you could do that um, pie chart which we'll do next that's right there there's all kinds of different ones you can play around with them and like I said I can't go through them all in this video but uh, there, that's all you have to do is so you just insert chart and you just make sure it's on the right one that you want. Um, every once in a while, you want to change something. So like this title here, I'm not super crazy about it. I might, instead of saying January versus expense, I'm going to double click so I can edit this and write January expenses just so it looks a bit better. I also don't like that. You see right here, it says the... Uh, the title on the left side here, the vertical title says January. That's definitely incorrect. This should be amount in dollars. Something like that. So it's it's so it doesn't say January on the left. So sometimes you get to play around with these things. You can also change the colors of these if you want. You know, if you want to use uh, red ones instead, you can. You can make it 3D. There's all kinds of things. You go under customize. Here's all your access titles are right here. You can change fonts and all kinds of things. And you can change grid lines. So if you want it to go up by units of 100 instead of 250, you can do anything you want in here. So everything you need is inside this customize tool, which is right in here. So if you ever need to get out, you just click the three dots, edit chart, and then you can see all that. So there's my bar chart. So what I'm going to do is I can just move that aside if I want. Or what I can even do is I can actually put it on its own tab which is really cool. So it says uh, move to own, sorry, wait, move to own sheet, that's it. And then it goes on its own tab down here. So you could do either way, it doesn't really matter. Um, so there's the bar chart. Now, let's say for example, I'll do a pie chart, but this time I wanna do a pie chart of March instead. So I need that column and this column highlighted. So with the January one, it wasn't a problem because I just went like this and I could get it, right? So there's two ways I could do March. I could highlight this, copy it, paste it down here, do March, copy it, paste it down here, and then they're right beside each other and I can highlight it. OK, 
Okay, that's actually not the ideal way of doing it. I'm going to remove those. The easiest way of doing it is to highlight the expense category first, and then on a Mac, you're going to hold Command, and if you hold Command, you can highlight a second column. Uh, on a Windows key, I think you probably hold Control or maybe Shift, but uh, one of those buttons would allow you to highlight two different separated columns like this. So now that I've got them highlighted, let's try it out. We're going to create a chart again. This is definitely the March expenses, which is really, really good. And this time I'm going to do a pie chart instead. So let's do a pie chart. And we got everything in here. That's great. That's exactly what I wanted. The only thing I'm not crazy about is the title. I'm going to double click here and just write March expenses. And that is basically it. So I've got five expenses. Rent is the biggest expense, obviously. It's saying it's three quarters or 75% of my money, which is basically probably what it is here. And uh, that's what the pie chart shows. It shows a percentage of where your money is going in this example. Okay, so there's the pie chart and the bar chart. Pretty straightforward, not too difficult. You can also do things like line graphs with this. So I'm going to create actually another tab. And let's go and call this a line graph example. And you might use something like this in math, for example. So let's say I've got a, an equation. I'm just going to write the equation here so you can see it. Y equals 3x uh, minus 8. Say I want to graph that thing. Here's how I would do it. I would make a column called x and a column called y. And for x, let's start with like negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's go like that. Now, what would the y value be here? So if you were to manually punch in negative 3 where x is, you would find out you'd get negative 9 minus 8 would give negative 17, right? But you can do that with an equation. So the equation for this cell would actually be equals 3 times x, and x is going to be this cell right here. That's my x, minus 8. So it's 3 times a2 minus 8. That is the same calculation as this. We got negative 17. Now, because I did it with a formula, what I can do is I can actually drag this. And what I'm doing is I'm pulling this bottom right corner right here. It looks like a box. You, you drag that down. And what it does is it basically copies and pastes the formula all the way down, which is really, really useful. You can see that the A numbers are changing. So this particular one, it's now using this X value. This one is using this X value, and so on and so on. You could generate 100 points in two seconds if you did the formula right on the first cell. So I've got enough now. I think I can make my line. Let's take a look. So the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to highlight everything. I'm going to insert, chart. It's already got it for me, which is really good. Look at that. It's already suggested it. Um, sometimes you find with line graphs, you may need to use this instead, potentially. Uh, if you want it to be actual dots instead of a line. So you could do either one. This one's connected to dots for me, and that might be a bit more appropriate for this example. But again, these are all things you can customize. Um, and the only thing, again, I would change probably is the title here. I might say graph of y equals 3x minus 8. I think that was the formula used. Yeah. And that's it. I got a perfect graph right now. I could print that out if I wanted. If I need it bigger, I could keep extending this and then uh, the graph. Uh, I would have to remake the graph again, but it, it'll basically work. So that's how you make line graphs. Very, very simple. Now, I want to do one more thing here. So just one more example. It's going to be a dotted graph again, but a lot of times what you use things like this for, especially spreadsheets, is maybe like uh, investments and stuff like that. So let's assume that I've got uh, a bank account here. And let's assume I've got some money in. So let's say uh, amount. Actually, let's go um, year. How about that? Year. Oops. Year and amount. And we're going to say year 0, 1, 2, 3. And let's see if we can continue this formula down. Yeah, there we go. Let's do 15 years worth. Okay. And we're going to start with $5,000. Now, my idea here is that the stock market on average has, has typically gone up 8% per year 
on average goes up 8% per year. That might be a little bit optimistic. I think it might be 7 uh, and you know, some years are really, really bad, obviously, and some years are really, really good. But I'm pretty sure the overall average of the stock market is 8% per year. And that's from like the, the Great Depression or something. Uh, that's the average it's been. So how do I make this, you know, if I'm starting with 5,000 bucks, how do I make it go up 8%, right? The way I would do that is I would go equals B2 times 1.08. 1.08, if you multiply by that, it makes it go up by 8%. So after one year, I would have 5,400 bucks. Okay, the next year would be equal B3, that's the, the most recent year, times 1.08. Now we're keeping, now it's getting compounded, right? The first year it went up 400 bucks, the next year it went up $432. Let's go ahead and drag our formula down. And there we go. You can see how it's it's actually figuring out all of our compound interest. The only thing I don't like about it right now is all those decimals. I'm going to change these into currency just to fix that issue. Okay. So you can see how much our, our investment would be worth. So it started as 5000 bucks. 15 years later, it'd be worth $15,000. Uh, that's assuming we're getting 8% and it's compounded once a year annually. There's a lot more complicated calculations you could do instead, but... Uh, this is just straight up increasing by 8% every single year. And uh, yeah, that's that's where you would be right now. You'd be at that amount of money, which is pretty cool. So let's make a quick graph of this thing, because the whole point of this video is to show some graphs. So we're going to highlight everything again. Insert, chart. Let's see what it looks like. There we go. Got a nice cool line graph. Maybe it'd be better with some dots. Let's try dots instead. It's definitely not a straight line. It's starting to curve because compound interest is an exponential type of graph. Uh, actually, it might even look better like that. I like that. That's good. So there's a, uh, a graph of investments. Now, again, this is 8%. You know, you can figure out things like what if it was 5% or 4% instead. So if it's 4%, how would everything change? You know, I have a lot less money, obviously, right? This is probably more realistic, especially with nowadays with the way stock market is. But you could play around with different numbers. You know, what do you need? And, you know, if you've got an end goal of ten thousand dollars, what do we need now to have it in fifteen years? Stuff like that. So spreadsheets are really good for planning and and uh, projecting future savings and things like that. So again, I just wanted to give a little example about that. And uh, so to summarize in a video, we went through bar charts. Showed you how to do that, how to customize some things. We did pie charts. We did a mathematical equation of a line graph. We just use a simple formula here, and that's the way we would do it. And then the last thing I did was I did a little bit of exponential growth here, four percent, eight percent, and just show you that uh, you know this 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 graph is live, so it's pretty cool. You know, if something happened where you know I'm going to do ten percent interest instead, you know that graph actually changes automatically which is really really cool oops I went 1% by accident 10% 10% let's see that's better so these graphs are live they're based off the actual information in your cells which is really cool so you can play with the data and change your graphs the way you want so anyways I hope you learned something here um, make sure you save your spreadsheet I'm going to call this thing graphs example and uh, yeah, hopefully you learned a little bit about making some charts or graphs in uh, Google Sheets.